Hello Saints, thank you once again for tuning in. Today's message is titled, Deceived. And the reason that I'm doing this message is because there are many who open up their mouths and they profess to know the Lord Jesus Christ, but in their works they are abominable and they are corrupt. And many of the churches, most of the churches tomorrow will be filled with hypocrites. They will be taught lies and they will be taught things that are not true and they will be led astray. And the tragedy of this is that many willingly follow after these deceivers and are deceived and they will not realize their deception until they are in hell and they melt away and there will not be a place found for them. The message deceived beginning in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their consciences seared with a hot iron. Yes, their conscience is seared as though it has been cauterized with a hot iron. They have no feelings for anything but for themselves. They are self-centered. They are covetous and they use those who visit their churches and who are members of their churches as merchandise. And this is what's going on in the world. Everyone is chasing after something that they cannot take with them. And these preachers and teachers that they've heaped up to satisfy their itching ears and their desire, they follow after blindly. And this is a terrible tragedy because we have been reminded of that in the scripture text. And the problem that arises from this is because those who profess to know the Lord Jesus Christ are hypocrites and they are liars because they do not place their trust in what the Lord has told us in the scripture. And this is what we must do. Our salvation is not based on how we feel. It is not based on what we think. It is not based on what we do, but it is our faith and trust in what the Lord has already told us and what he has done on the cross. There are some who think that they must needs go to church. It is never told us in the scripture that we must build huge buildings and have these buildings with pews and seats and then invite those in and fleece them selling tapes, books, conferences or whatever they may have, bazaars or fairs at their church. They're doing everything that men would do and they are following after their traditions and not the truth that the Lord has given us. It is a shame that many of these things happen in our world today and no one is paying attention but they blindly follow after. You know, I had shared with my wife that I would never be back in a church building only for specific reasons. One, if someone invited me to a special event and it was a friend of mine, I would go. If I was going to a funeral to say goodbye to a fellow saint or friend that I've known over time, I would show up. If I passed away and those who came to see me, they may see me in a church, but I would never be over there for learning. I would never be over there to be taught anything because I have the scripture, I have the truth, and I have access to it. And this is the error that many have made because they are deceived. And I'm going to give you a definition of what deceived means. Deceive. Swindle. Defraud. Cheat. Trick. Hoodwink. Hoax. Dupe. Take in. Mislead. Delude. Fool. Outwit. Lead on. Invigable. Beguile. Double cross. Gull. Con. Bamboozle. Do. Jip. Diddle, shaft, sucker, snooker, stip. This is what people are being done to at their churches that they go to. And the reason that you can see this and know it is the truth because you will have the Methodists going to their churches tomorrow. You will have the Catholics showing up at their whore of a church tomorrow thinking that they need to confess their sins to a man when it is already told us in the book of Timothy that there is one mediator between man and God and it is the man Christ. And they will go over there thinking that they can pray and do something something for those who have already left this world and have split hell wide open. There is no mention of purgatory. You will have those Presbyterians going to their church tomorrow and those are the ones who put sodomites in leadership positions and they come to folk with this 
hell of a deadly doctrine of love, saying that everyone should be loved. But it says in the scripture that God is angry with the wicked every day. And I am inclined to believe that. And it also tells us in the scripture that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. And this is what many are facing living in this world today because they have placed their trust in those who deceive. And then a deceiver is a Pharisee a snake in the grass, a dissembler, a Jesuit, a cockatrice, a hypocrite, a Janus, a Judas, a Sophit, a peck sniff, a serpent, a wolf in sheep's clothing. And that is what these preachers and teachers are today. And many remain ignorant because they do not search the scripture daily to see whether those things the Lord has told us is true or not true. And this is the error of many. Now, Paul discusses a prophecy. The Holy Spirit warns that some believers will be deceived by evil spirits and abandon their faith. This damage to the church will come from unscrupulous teachers. They will introduce false and unnecessary rules of self-denial, such as staying single or living by a strict diet. Needless to say, they have no instruction from God for this and no intention of keeping such rules themselves. Paul is attacking teachers who deny the good things of life. They tell their followers to apply rigid self-control. Behind this is the idea that this world and our bodies are bad. The world must be avoided and our bodies must be punished. If we try hard enough, we will escape from the pool of the earthly desires and become spiritually spiritual enough to go to heaven. Perhaps the Gnostics of the next century with their secret information and mystic passwords have something of this approach. But it is not the truth. The only truth that we have is found in the scripture. It is found in Jesus because he has said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And many are in error because they do not search the scriptures and they do not trust the scriptures and they do not seek the scriptures. And it tells us in the scripture text, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness. This is what we are to do. Follow after what the Lord Jesus Christ has given us in commandment for us to do. And if we love him, we will keep his commandments. It is nowhere in the scripture that tells us to take giant collections and to build big, beautiful churches that look beautiful and wonderful and lovely on the outside, but inside they are full of death and dead men's bones. This is what the churches are full of because they are not teaching the truth. It's just like there are several different gospels but the gospel meant for us today and for the Gentiles is 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. We hear the story of Jesus. We hear the story of the God man, Jesus Christ, and we believe it. And this is what we do. No one has seen Jesus in this time and they cannot say that he is a liar because no one has come back and said that he is a liar and has been able to prove that. Jesus Christ is the truth and the truth resides in him and it is in his word. It goes on to tell us in 2 Timothy 3, Starting in verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. We have a great and straight and crystal clear warning here to turn away from those who are given to wickedness and who are given to those doctrines that go against the truth. Now there are many who do not know the truth from a lie because they have not spent any time with the Lord and they do not trust in the Lord and they have not placed their trust in what the Lord has shown us and told us in his word. 
Paul describes how people will be in the last days. The last days are the years between the ascension of Jesus to heaven and his return to earth and glory. They are the times in which we live. Paul says that people will be entirely self-centered. It is true. That's just like you see a lot of these prosperity preachers on uh, TV, like Joe Osteen, for instance. He's got the million dollar smile. He's taking up over $700,000 on a collection on a Sunday from his church. But yet there are people that belong to his church that cannot pay their bills. They cannot pay their rent. But yet this man is making figures that has zero, 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 zero. He's making millions of dollars a year because he's made merchandise of those people and they are willingly as sheep going to the slaughter because they are void and have no understanding of what the truth is. They will love money and pleasure for themselves, but be proud, aggressive, and treacherous toward others. They will have no love, respect, or forgiveness in their relationships. They will be keen to show off their religion, but they will not let the truth change their lives because they do not know the truth. Paul says that the phony religious teachers will exploit silly women in their own homes. They will take advantage of their weakness, guilt, and longings. He likens such teachers to Janus and Jambres, who were sick said to be Pharaoh's chief musicians in the disputes with Moses. Such people use their cunning to defy God, but will be exposed as charlatans. Yes, when the secrets of men are judged by Jesus Christ, it will be a level playing field, and no one will have a defense. No one will have an excuse, and no one will be able to wrangle themselves out, and those who have placed their trust and their love and money, and those things that corrode and mill do and putrefy and those things that they cannot take with them won't be able to save them and no one gets away because everyone will be held accountable for how they lived on this life and what they did with the resources that the Lord had provided them and many blatantly remain ignorant and they willingly remain ignorant and they act as though they are like those in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, where the enemy has blinded the minds of those who do not know the Lord and they are void of knowing what the truth is and many who profess to know the Lord are just that way blind and know not the truth and have no need and have no worry or no desire to even know that they are missing the mark and heading to destruction this is what many do without even asking a question about where they are going it says for us to turn away from those things verse 6 of 2 Timothy 3 for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead silly women laden with sins led away with divers lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the truth. Yes, reprobate meaning that they are completely no good. They are good for nothing and they are nothing to be used for anything good. They are foul and they are putrefied in everything that they have done and what they teach and many go on without even questioning what is going on in those buildings that they call churches. The church is a body of believers. The church are those who have placed their trust in what is the truth and the scripture. That is what the church is. There is nothing in the scripture, as I said before, that tells us to be build big, beautiful buildings and to take up collections to pay for heat and air conditioning and to pay for one man to ride around in a nice car and live in a nice house wearing Rolex watches, gold, diamonds, and jewels. This is not what we are to do. We are to do those things as far as following after the Lord Jesus Christ and to be content in whatever state that we are in because the Lord always provide all of our needs in Jesus Christ. Those who have placed their trust in the Lord know this to be true. And they are not seeking after those things that perish and that they cannot take with them. Yes, we have all come into the world naked and we will leave the world taking nothing with us in our hands. This is the truth and many are void of it because you have these prosperity teachers. They are teaching that if you don't have money or if you don't have property or if you are not keeping up with the Joneses that you are not blessed. But it tells us explicitly in the book of Ephesians that we are blessed in heavenly places and you cannot be blessed more than that.
Verse 9, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs was. Just as the folly of Janus and Jambres was manifested before all people, and it is manifested before all men, because they did not proceed from where they were, and they could not perform every miracle that Moses performed. It only shows that evil does work in this world, and it was to their own hurt and harm, because they are only created more terrible of the terrible that the Lord had poured out on them when Janus and Jabbers thought that they could withstand the Lord. And we see many men that live this way and they do these things blatantly. And they think that there will not come a time when they will be held responsible for what they taught, what they believed and what they taught others and how they led those astray who were void of understanding, wisdom and the truth. And this is the reason why we must sola scriptura, place our trust only in the scripture. It is the only good thing we have in this world. It is the thing that tells us the truth because in this book, there is no great accolades for men talking about their accomplishments and how wonderful they are and what they have done that is good. It tells us of our depravity, Romans chapter three. It tells us that no one is good, Romans chapter three. And it says that even on your best day, when you're handing out your best, looking your best and think that you are acting your best you are still filthy yes this is what the scripture says about us and I am inclined to believe it because it says the truth about God that he is not a liar and it says the truth about men is that we're destitute of the truth and we have one foot on a banana peel and the other in hell unless we have a relationship and have the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ residing in our hearts Verse 13 of 2 Timothy 3, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Yes, this is what's going on. They are deceiving those who are following after them ignorantly. They are being deceived because they think in their own hearts what they are doing is the truth. And they are living for this world. They are living for the things in this world. They are chasing after and desiring the things of this world. And not to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and to know him and the power of his resurrection. This is what those true saints of the Lord will do. It's just like the Catholic Church have the nerve to pick out certain people and want to raise them to a saints. But those who are saints are those who are true, who believe that Jesus Christ is the God man and that he died on the cross for their sins and that he will return to hand out punishment for those who refuse to receive him and refuse to turn out of darkness and into the light. Paul goes on to speak to Timothy and he says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And I would encourage you, Saint, to do the same to stick with those things that you know are true because they come from the scripture. There is nothing else that we have that can lead us in the right direction and down the right path because it says that his word is a light and a lamp to our path and it leads our way. And that is what the word does. And God also himself says in the book of Psalms that he will guide us and he will lead us with his own eye if only we would place our trust in him. But many have heaped up teachers and preachers and schools schools and books and notebooks and notes and degrees and they think because they have become wise as it tells us in Romans chapter 1 they are fools because they think that they are able to be smarter and wiser than the one who have given us the ability to think. Paul tells them but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. And then it tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This is telling us that if we have the scripture and we place our trust in the scripture and we believe it from the time that we first 
were received and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and our spirits were regenerated into us and brought to a new life Titus 3 5 that this is where our trust lies and what the Lord has told us and shown us in his word it is not in men it is not in their traditions it is not in your Presbyterian Church it is not in the corrupt Catholic Church it is not in the Baptist Church who teach that those who know the Lord Jesus Christ must go through something called believers baptism let me see if that's in the scripture I'm not going to even look and try to fool anyone there because believers baptism is not in the scripture and those Jews who Jesus came and that rejected him they had to perform a work in order to show that they believed that he was the Messiah but that is not for us only thing we need to do is believe and this is how we are saved and there are many teachings being taught in churches and there are many things being taught in corrupt Bible studies at these churches that many think is the truth because they have placed their trust in what men say rather than what the Lord has said in his word and when we know that the scripture can make us perfect through all things we need nothing else to teach us or to lead us because we have it here with us now this is the error of many because they refuse to believe that the Lord has given us everything here in his word and yes we do have everything here in the word that we need to know and to understand but many are deceived and they remain deceived because they do not know the truth and have no desire for the truth many are thinking and chasing after these things that will not help them and will not save them and then it says here many deceivers and deceived false Christ will lead many astray many will say I am Christ many will come saying I am he many false prophets will arise many false witnesses are, are here many will betray one another and hate one another and this is what we have going on it's just like in the body of Christ many claim that they know the Lord and they claim that they have a relationship with them but they are attacking one another they are like wolves ripping and tearing those who they should be loving and they should be instructing in those things that are true and that are right but they refuse to do that because they are void of what the truth is and they don't want to come to the truth because they want to remain in their own way and just like it tells us also in 2nd Peter 3 3 it says knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and this is what we have people wanting their own way it's just like I saw a story on TV last night and it was about this guy that he was married he had a wife and they were believers going to a church but this guy chased after every woman he chased after pornography he did all those things that were evil in the sight of God and he was given to those things because the church that he went to was not one that taught one the truth and the enemy used it to destroy him and this is what will happen to those who are following after men this is what will happen to those who have placed their trust in men and this is the destiny nation of those who trust in themselves and continue to follow after what they believe or what they think is the truth now I do not want to tell someone well this is what I believe what I believe is the scripture what I believe is the truth that is only found in Jesus it's not found in what men can say do or what they can give me it is not found in some corrupt church building of which men have made telling folk that they must needs attend those foul and detestable places yes denominations they are an abomination because the Apostle Paul has told us that we are to believe the same things and we are to speak the same things but if you're going to a Methodist church and you're calling yourself a Methodist and if you are going to a Catholic church calling yourself a Catholic if you are going to a Baptist church calling yourself a Baptist you are in error because those who have placed their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ know that there are perilous times upon us now because the truth is scarce hardly to be found and many it is no thing to them for many they pay no attention to this because to them the truth is not necessary 
To them, the truth is their own truth. And this is what many have, and this is what they do, is follow after their own ways. But we have been warned that we are to pay attention to the things that's going on in the world, and that we are not to be given to those things that are error, and that are not true, and that are evil, and that are wicked. But we are to follow after and do those things that are right and acceptable before the Lord Jesus Christ. And just as it tells us in Peter, it says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. And this is what men and women do today. And they think that they are holy and people look at them and believe that they are holy, but they are deceived. They are fools and they are trusting in and following after those things that lead to death, destruction, darkness, and agony forever. Now, in this message, I hope that those that have watched this message are inclined and encouraged to seek the truth in the scripture. Be a Berean. Open the book. Open the scripture text and read it, seeking that those things the Lord has told us is or is not true and you will find that those things the Lord has told us is true because God is not a man Jesus Christ who is the God man in the flesh cannot lie like men can lie because he is God and he knows the hearts of those who are seeking the truth and seeking him because Jesus Christ has says I am the truth the way and the life and no man comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus has also said that the way that leads to truth in life is narrow. And there are many who read that scripture. There are many who hear this scripture and it does not affect them. It does not make them draw back. It does not make them think. It does not make them wonder that maybe they may be the one taking the broad way, which is the wrong way and the way that leads to destruction. But the way that leads to truth, yes, it is narrow. There are a few that teach the truth because they know it and they are pressing into their ministry and they are doing those things that are pleasing before the Lord and they are not chasing over those things and fighting over and trying to climb over and trying to get to those things that perish and that once they have gained, if they die and when they die and leave this planet, it will be another man's. It will be in someone else's hands to take care of because just as we came into this world, with our hands empty, we will leave the same way. But there are many who are teaching things that are not true, and that is not correct doctrine. And many follow after that because they do not check the scriptures and believe and trust in the scriptures for what they have said. If anyone is following after error and seeking error, they will be held responsible for that. And they are responsible for that because we do have the word of God. We have it in book form. We have it in electronic form. I have it on my iPhone. I have it on several iPads. I have it on my computer and I am able to read it, listen to it. I am able to absorb it all on my own and I have no man telling me that I can or cannot receive this truth. And this is the error of many. They'll go to their churches tomorrow and they'll open up their books and they'll read only what the pastor has given them to read and then for the rest of the week they'll live like those in 2 Corinthians 4 4 as though their minds have been blinded and they have no knowledge of what the truth is. I do pray that the Lord will add a blessing with this message.